Okay, um, there's kind of like three things to do in 7.4. There's uh, um, so first 7.4.1, we have derivatives of transform. And basically, it's it's uh, gonna let you know what to do whenever you have some uh, factor of t in your Laplace transform, and it would be nice if you could get rid of that thing. So how do I do that? It's basically just you're taking the derivative with respect to s of uh, your Laplace transform. And you can see if you took the derivative of this thing, you'll get an extra factor of t. All right, so it's the derivative with respect to s. F, big F of s, again, is Laplace transform of some function f of t. So we can write that as d with respect to s of the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative st f of t um, dt. And then we could take the derivative of, uh, we, we could kind of move this derivative inside the integral. Okay, You want to be very careful about doing that kind of stuff. Um, but because of the way th things have been set up for us in the book, it, it's uh, you can do this interchange. Okay, So you have e to the negative st, f of t, dt from 0 to infinity. And uh, certainly if you take the derivative of this thing with respect to s, you're going to see a factor of t kind of establish itself, right? So the derivative e to the negative s is just e to the um, I'm sorry, the derivative e to the negative st is just e to the negative st, and then you have, of course, the chain rule, so the derivative of negative st with respect to s is negative t, um, and then times f of t dt, so, uh, uh, you know, and still the same limits on the integral. You can factor out the negative, and you have the integral of e to the negative st times t f of t, dt from 0 to infinity, and of course this is just equal to um, the negative of the Laplace transform of t f of t. Okay. So this kind of becomes the thing that you're doing the transform of. So going in reverse, you, you can kind of make this rule then, uh, starting here with so the negative Laplace transform of t f of t is equal to the derivative with respect to s of uh, the Laplace transform of f of t. Okay. So if you're in a situation where you have this pesky t in your Laplace transform, you can just kind of kick it out to the curb and take the derivative of the Laplace transform of everything else. Okay. Um, right, so in general then, if you keep taking derivatives, um, you'll get higher and higher powers. So if you took the derivative again, you know, you would have another factor of t, and the negatives would store, sort of work in a way where the first derivative uh, would be negative, um, the second one would be positive, etc. So. Um, uh, shoot, let me write it like this. Uh, the Laplace transform of t to the n f of t is going to be equal to negative 1 to the nth power. So if n is equal to 1 like we just saw, it'll be negative. If n is 2, it'll be positive, and it kind of flip-flops because of the, the chain rule. Okay, so negative 1 to the n times the derivative with respect to s. Um, the nth derivative with respect to s, whoops, I put my little derivative inside in the wrong place, of, uh, uh, you know, the Laplace transform of f of t. And, and of course the book is writing it as f of s instead of Laplace transform of f of t. Okay. So anyways, uh, let's go ahead and take a look at example one, I guess. And see what we got there. So they want the Laplace transform of t sine of kt. Um, so I know how to do this part of it, but not the t. So you just use this this new found 
rule, it'll be the negative derivative with respect to S of the Laplace transform of sine of kt. All right. So you have to do some derivatives. Um, this will be then the derivative of k all over s squared plus k squared. And for that, you're going to need a quotient rule. No, 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 you don't even need that. You could rewrite this thing. Let's just rewrite it as uh, k times s squared plus k squared to the negative 1. And then uh, it'll be negative. And then a uh, power rule, so bring down the negative 1 um, times k times s squared plus k squared. Uh, to the negative 1 minus 1 is negative 2, and then the chain rule, the multiply by the derivative of the guts, that would be 2s. And then you can rewrite it, so negative negative is positive, you have 2sk all over s squared plus k squared squared. Okay. Um, yeah, great. So a little bit easier to deal with uh, a more and more general type issues now. Um, and there's more than one way to skin a cat. So you see this note, they're saying that, you know, you could do Laplace transform in two different ways now. Um, especially this, uh, if you have a Laplace of te to the 3t, you could do a shift on the s-axis, or you could just do what we did, take the derivative. Uh, either one's work. Um, let's look at an example. Maybe we should actually do a problem rather than looking at their example. Let's do one from the homework. Okay, so here, are any of these all that nasty? Maybe we should try one of those. Um, let's try number five. Y prime plus Y equals T sine T y of 0 is 0. So solve this initial value problem. Um, so as usual, Laplace transform the derivative. You get s Laplace y um, minus uh, y of 0, which of course is just 0, plus Laplace of y equals Laplace t sine t. Um, so this will be s plus 1 times Laplace of y equals this thing. So you think of it as a negative derivative with respect to s of the uh, Laplace transform of sine. Laplace transform of sine is 1 all over s squared plus 1. So we'll have s plus 1 Laplace transform of y and over here on the other side. Um, let's rewrite that thing. So we could just do a power rule on it, all right? Times s squared plus 1 to the negative 1. All right, so power rule it. Um, I get now a positive 1 in front, and then s squared plus 1 to the negative 2, and then chain rule 2s. So I got s plus 1 the plus of y equals. 2s all over s squared plus 1 squared. Solve for Laplace of y. This will be 2s all over s plus 1 times s squared plus 1 squared. Um, sadly, you're going to have to do partial fractions on this guy. Um, like I said, we're going to sort of develop a method to kind of get around partial fractions every once in a while, but Honestly, you're going to be doing a lot of partial fractions. Obviously, you already know this um, from the last homework, probably. But anyways, what do we have here? A all over S plus 1 plus BS plus C all over S squared plus 1 plus DS plus E all over S squared plus 1 squared. Multiply through, 2s is equal to a times uh, s squared plus 1 squared. I'm going to write it all out so I can foil it. Plus bs plus c times s plus 1 times s squared plus 1 plus 
ds plus e um, times, I guess we just need an s plus 1 on that guy. So I have 2s equals a times s to the fourth plus 2s squared plus 1 plus bs plus c times, what is this thing going to be? s cubed plus s squared plus s plus 1, I think, plus, let's see, ds squared plus ds plus es plus e. Let me make sure this thing was right. Um, so I have s squared, <laughs> you know, oh, sorry, s cubed. Um, that's right here. S cubed, and then I had um, S, and then I had S squared, and then I had 1. Okay, I think that's okay. So 2S is equal to AS to the fourth plus 2AS squared plus A plus, oh no, <laughs> BS to the fourth plus BS cubed plus BS squared plus BS plus CS cubed plus CS squared plus CS plus C plus d s squared plus d s plus e s plus e and then assuming you didn't make any mistakes there you're going to go ahead and form some equations so first with the fourth powers a plus b i'm thinking is zero the third powers b plus c is equal to 0. The second powers 2a plus b plus c plus d is 0. The first powers b plus c plus d plus e is equal to 2. Whoops. Not you. So I'm going to D, E, C, and B. Okay, and then the zeroth powers A plus C plus E. Okay, equals zero. Grand. So I have A is negative B or vice versa. Um, B is negative C. Okay. Grand. Um, so I can kind of replace a bunch of stuff with B's and I don't know. Uh, so negative B is negative negative C. So C. C is A, right? So I have 2C minus C plus C plus D is equal to 0. So that's going to be um, 2C, 3C. So 2C plus D is equal to 0. So D equals negative 2Cs. Um, I have A plus C is equal to E. And this, this guy, so we'll go with this guy. So negative C um, plus C minus 2C plus E equals 2. So I have negative 3C plus C is negative 2C plus E is <coughs> equal to 2. And this equation, the last equation, I can replace A with C. So I have 2C plus E is equal to zero, and then I could add the last two equations together. Okay, so 2e will equal 2, so finally e is equal to 1. Um, so negative 2c will be equal to 1, so c is equal to negative 1 half. So d is equal to um, 1. Um, so b is equal to positive one half, and of course a is equal to negative one half. I have to get my cat because he's throwing a fit. Okay, so, right. okay, so 
So anyways, um, presuming I didn't make any mistakes, which seems highly unlikely, I can now rewrite what I started with. Right. So I have um, Laplace of y equaling negative one half all over s plus one plus one half s plus c, which is negative one half. So I need to go back and erase that plus sign. So that'd be. Uh, one half, and I'm just going to write those as two different fractions because I don't have to break them up anyways. S squared plus one minus one half all over S squared plus one because C is negative one half, and then plus S all over S squared plus one squared, and then plus 1 all over s squared plus 1 squared, where I had to, I had to separate those guys because they were nightmarishly uh, sort of... Gonna cause, they were going to cause me trouble, so I just split those fractions into two. Okay, now I have to do reverse or inverse Laplace on all these guys. So the first one is an exponential, so it's negative one half e to the negative t. Um, the next guy uh, looks like it's a cosine, so plus one half cosine of t. Um, those are both what they're no. The, then the other guy's a sine, so minus one half sine of t, and then. This next guy um, looks like it's sorry. Um, brain meltdown, I'm trying to remember. Okay, so I need Laplace transform, inverse transform of these guys, whatever the heck these guys are. I'm not going to think about those for a second, apparently. So my brain's not working. Over the squared plus one squared, like that. Okay, so... So, I mean, kind of looking back, you could kind of tell what they're supposed to be. Um, they're kind of like derivatives of these Laplace transforms. So, um, this guy here looks like it's the derivative with respect to S of something like um, a, uh, a sign, right? Um, so it would be something like the derivative of 1 all over s squared plus um, 1, kind of. It's not exactly the same thing. Um, and what, what the homework is going to tell you is to kind of look, use the table of Laplace transforms if you, if you get in trouble. I don't know if they can hyperlink it in another window. Yeah, there you go. Isn't that? Oh, there we go. Um, you know. For these, for these kind, I would probably give you formulas for these because unless you're not going to be, you're not going to have time to get too familiar with them. But going through, um, it's number 22 and kind of number 23. I think we're we're after and 24. Those guys, just depending on on what we're looking at. So let me um, kind of 
see what we're looking at. So the, the one, uh, the first one where I have the arrow at it, I need to get my marker back and it's not letting me give it to, oh, there it is, thank you. Um, okay. So the, the first guy looks like, kind of like a 22, except I'm missing some stuff, right? I'm missing the uh, two. So I have to manipulate it to work. So basically I'm, I'm going to have to reimagine this thing. Laplace inverse of, uh, I need a two times one times s in the numerator for s squared plus one. So to accomplish that, I have to multiply by a one half and then I'll end up factoring that out. Um, the other guy, uh, one all over s squared plus one. So if there's a constant in the top, you're looking at number 25, okay? You just have to rewrite it again to get the two in the top. And thankfully, the one cubed um, isn't going to affect anything. So we, we have two all over s squared minus, uh, whoops, that's a minus, so I can't use this. No, it's 22. So plus k, k squared, k is just one, and then this squared, and then I have to multiply by one half to make it work. Okay, okay so then I should be able to... Um, easily kind of deal with that using these formulas. So let me move this over. Um, so ultimately I'm going to have y equals negative, assuming I didn't make any mistakes in the partial fractions. And you saw that thing was just a nightmare. So we'll find out. And minus one half sine of t um, plus one half on the first guy, factored out the one half. And I said that was 22, so that'd be t sine t, and then plus a one half on that guy. That one's a little more complicated. That's number 20. Um, what do we say? That was 25. So that'd be sine t minus t cosine t, like that. Okay, and you might be able to combine some like terms. Yeah. So th this sine. You're going to end up distributing this, right? And then this part will cancel with this part. And then I think that's about all you can do. So you get y equals negative 1 half e to the negative t plus 1 half cosine t plus 1 half t sine t minus 1 half t cosine t when all is said and done. So yeah, you're probably going to have to kind of look at the chart to help you on your journey. Um, I nailed it. Got it right. First time for everything, right? All right. Um, I guess we could try one of these. As much as I hate to do it, try number seven before we move on to convolutions. It's number seven. Let's see what kind of a nightmare that is, right? So y double prime plus nine y equals f of t. We have y of zero equals zero y prime of zero is one. And then we have um, one of these step functions. So uh, looks like they want it turned on to cosine of three t until it gets to pi. So then minus cosine of three t times u of t minus pi. Okie dokie, so um, let me open this back up and zoom in a little bit. All right, so Laplace transform, the derivative, of course you get s squared, Laplace y minus s times y of zero, which is zero, minus y prime of zero, which is one, plus nine Laplace of y. On the right hand side, Laplace of three t will be Cosine 3t would be s all over s squared plus 9. And then we have um, minus the Laplace of this thing. Of course, you've got e to the negative pi s. And then the Laplace <coughs> of uh, cosine of 3 times t <coughs> plus pi. So again, you have to adjust it appropriately. Um, this thing right here from the couscous formula is cosine 3t, cosine 3pi, 
and the rest will be zero. So cosine of three pi, think about your unit circle, um, one, two, three is negative one, so that's negative cosine of three t. Um, so you're thinking, let's rewrite it, s squared Laplace y minus uh, s times zero is zero, minus one plus nine Laplace y equals s all over s squared plus nine minus e to negative pi s times the Laplace of basically this. Um, so there's, it's going to be a plus and then you'll have um, <coughs> s all over s squared plus nine again. Okay. Um, and then we can, yeah, we're going to have to uh, move this one over to the other side. So I have an s squared plus nine when I factor out the Laplace y equals s all over s squared plus 9 plus e to the negative pi s times s all over s squared plus 9 and then plus a 1 and then divide everything by s squared plus 9 so you'll have some partial fractions to deal with um, so you have s all over s squared plus 9 squared plus e to the negative pi s um, times s all over s squared plus 9 squared plus 1 all over s squared plus 9. That last guy is just a sign of 3t um, times, you know, one third. But uh, anyways, those first two guys, um, I'm going to have to do partial fractions again. So s all over s squared plus 9 squared. That's um, a s plus b all over s squared plus 9 plus c s plus d all over s squared plus 9 squared. Multiplying through, you get s equals a s plus b times s squared plus 9 plus just plain old c s plus d. And then you get, um, <coughs> you get yeah, uh, foil, so I have a s cubed plus 9 a s plus b s squared plus 9 b plus c s plus d, and then you can start making your equations, so a must just be zero. Um, the squared terms, well apparently b is zero as well, that doesn't make any, any bloody sense, so I must have made a mistake. There's just no way, you know. What did I do wrong? So I'll just get C as one, right? Well, maybe you don't have to do a partial fractions then. Um, maybe that's just not the way to go. Maybe we could just apply that, that one formula. Um, yeah. So it's just going to be a, a, a 22. <laughs> really? Um, all right. Well, you live, you learn. Um, so let me write that formula down. T sine kt and uh, 2ks all over s squared plus k squared squared. Yeah, a little too gung-ho to do a, a partial fraction sometimes get you into trouble. Anyways, y then will equal the inverse Laplace transform of all this jazz. So the first one, yeah, use this formula on it. So I'm thinking of this guy. <laughs> So that, uh, I'm missing a factor of two, so I have to multiply it by one half, and then everything will be in order with a k value. Well, then you're missing a k in the top as well, so you're missing a, a three in the top, so it's gonna be um, not one half, but rather one six. And then you could go uh, t sine of three t. And then the next guy, um, sadly has 
that that shifted thing on it so it's going to be um, <clears throat> a step function u of t minus pi and then uh, basically just this guy repeated but it shifted right so you have to go t minus pi wherever you see t so it'd be 1 6 times t minus pi times sine of 3 times t minus pi Okay. And then the last guy we said is just going to be uh, a sign. Uh, so you have to multiply by a factor of one third to get it done, but then sine of 3t. Um, you can simplify a little bit like this guy right here, um, 3t minus pi, 3 pi, same sign formula, sine of 3t, um, cosine of 3 pi, and then uh, minus zero so so this part will be negative sine of 3t because um, cosine of 3t is a negative one so it looks like i'm getting barring any uh, crazy errors 1 6 t sine of 3t um, plus or rather minus right because there was that negative minus uh, u of t minus pi, there's a 1 6 floating about, um, times a t minus pi, times sine of 3t plus 1 3rd sine of 3t, then we cross our fingers and hope it worked. Right? So going back here, um, yeah. So did I get the other junk? So there's a 1 6 t sine 3 t, got that. 1 3rd sine 3 t, got that. Negative 1 6 u of t minus pi, t minus, yeah, I got it. Okay, so, yeah. All right, um, so, so yeah. Uh, the inverse Laplace transforms of these things are not easy to identify. Um, the, but, uh, you, you know, I'll probably give you those formulas that, that I just used because I couldn't remember them. I mean, when you're doing your homework and you're you're really in the mix of it, you'll remember it. But um, give it a week and you'll probably forget it unless you're making those note cards on them. I don't know. Maybe we should add those to the note card mix. Yeah. Uh, anyways, um, let's take a look at convolutions. So the convolutions are nice because you're going to come across some really annoying um, uh, inverse Laplace transforms that, that you have to do all these PDFs on, right? I mean, we just saw the, those things. Um, and it would be nice sometimes if when you're given some, some crazy, you know, inverse Laplace transform of something like s cubed all over s squared times s plus one times s plus two squared. It would be nice if you could just break those into two parts maybe and do the Laplace transform of each one like s cubed all over s squared times s plus one and then maybe Laplace inverse of the other of the rest of it you know um, and generally you're not allowed to do that right but we're going to have a way around that with these things called convolutions okay so if you have Laplace transform of a convolution and my cat is throwing yet another fit if you have a convolution you're going to be able to pull this this trick so that's kind of why we look at them um, they come up in some differential equations as well so let's take a look at that stuff okay so the convolution is kind of a, a, a another type of multiplication you could think of so 7.4.2 more transforms uh, well, I guess this is kind of new, transforms of integrals. Um, so first we begin with the convolution. And it, it's like a multiplication. So you see f times g there, uh, but we'll define the multiplication as the integral of the product. Um, from zero to t of f of tau, 
times g of t minus tau, d tau. Okay. Um, the awesome thing about this is that um, the Laplace transform of the convolution is equal to the Laplace transform, the, the product of the Laplace transforms. Okay. So that's what they're getting at here in part A. I mean, they're actually going to send you through the process of doing uh, uh, an evaluation of a convolution. Uh, sure, let's, let's go through example three here just to see how it is. So part A, they actually want you to compute this. So um, that is going to be the integral from zero to the t of, and you could put either one as f or g. So you could put uh, e to the tau sine of t minus tau, or you could put e to the t minus tau times sine of tau. Okay, it doesn't really matter. Um, but one thing that's important, you can't put tau minus t instead of t minus tau. That, that screws it up. But uh, anyways, <clears throat> let's see what we got here. So uh, I'm going to use my f as e to the t. So I have e to the tau times sine of t minus tau d tau. I'm going to have to do by parts on this thing. Um, so, you know, I'm going to let my p equal uh, Lee 8 says trig before exponential, so sine of t minus tau, and then dq will be e to the tau. We're with respect to tau, so anyways, q will be e to the tau again, and then dp um, <coughs> will be a negative because of the chain rule, and then cosine of t minus tau. So this will be um, e to the tau sine of t minus tau minus will become plus um, the integral of e to the tau cosine of t minus tau. And, and of course, this will become a looper because life is never that easy. Um, so we have another by parts. <coughs> so dq. Again, make e to the tau, p make cosine of t minus tau, and then q will be e to the tau, and dp will be negative um, sine t minus tau times another negative, so it would be sine of t minus tau. So you're going to end up with, uh, and of course we want to replace this thing with an i, okay, so I have i equals e to the tau sine of t minus tau um, plus e to the tau cosine of t um, minus tau and then minus the integral of e to the tau times sine of t minus tau but that's just i right so minus i move the i over so you get two i's divide by the two you get i equals e to the tau sine t uh, minus tau all over 2 plus e to the tau cosine of t minus tau all over 2. And we have to evaluate from 0 to the t. So it'll equal uh, plugging in t first e to the t times sine of t minus t. Sine of t minus t is sine of zero, sine of zero is zero. Okay. Um, and then plus e to the t times cosine of zero. Cosine of zero is one, so we'll have e to the t all over two. And then uh, minus, plugging in zero for tau, I get e to the tau, which is one, times sine of t minus zero. So you get sine of t all over two. And then uh, minus e to the 0, which is 1, times cosine of t minus 0, which is cosine t all over 2. Okay. All right, then. And of course, that's what you see there. Um, then I want to do the Laplace transform of this thing. All right. So let me um, gonna move out from there. So part B is the Laplace of e to the t with uh, convoluted with sine of t. 
Okay, so the Laplace transform of that is really just the Laplace transform of this thing, which we just found. So that would be um, equal to uh, um, yeah, <laughs> one all over two times one all over s, I guess, uh, minus one, minus one all over two times uh, this, the Laplace of sine of t, right? So that'd be one all over s squared plus one, the minus one half um, uh, s all over, uh, what is that, cosine s squared plus one. Um, so you see that there, and then they, what they do is find a common denominator and combine it all into one thing. And why are they doing that? It's because they're, they're trying to make a point there. Okay, so let's kind of see what their point is. Um, so first we have one half times one over sine minus one uh, minus uh, those two fractions. So we have one half times uh, 1 minus s all over s squared plus 1. Or is it, it'll be 1 plus s. Okay. And then get a common denominator. So um, looks like it's going to be uh, need to multiply top and bottom by 2 times s squared plus 1 on the first fraction. All right. Oh, wait, I already have a 2 in the denominator, so I don't need the 2 again. Just need the s squared plus one. Downstairs I have two times s minus one. Minus, um, in, in the denominator, I need an s, well, sorry, so an s squared plus one there. So this would be two times, I need an s minus one in this guy, in the s squared plus one. So it'd be uh, s plus one times s minus one. And this will be s squared plus one minus if you FOIL out, that'd be s squared minus 1, so s squared plus 1, all over 2 times s minus 1 times s squared plus 1, which equals s squares cancel, and you just have 1 all over 2 times s minus 1 times s squared plus 1, I think. Um, let's see if that's what they got. Well, I lost my 2 somewhere. Um, let's see what I did. Oh, it's 1 plus 1 is 2. Duh. All right, and that would be 1 all over s minus 1 times s squared plus 1. Um, anyways, uh, what was what's their point? Well, look what happens. Um, uh, the Laplace of e to the t times the Laplace of sine t. Right, what is that? Laplace of e to the t is 1 all over um, s minus 1. Laplace of sine of t is 1 all over uh, s squared plus 1. So in this case, it seems like you could kind of, there's kind of like this, um, you know, the Laplace of a product is equal to the product of the Laplaces, right? That's not true in general. If you have the Laplace of t sine t, we just learned, you know, that's not equal to um, 1 over uh, s squared times 1 all over s squared plus 1, right? That this, this is, no, this is the derivative, the negative derivative with respect to s of 1 all over s squared um, plus 1, which, of course, is going to give you um, 2s all over s squared plus 1 squared. Okay, so those those are clearly not the same. That doesn't always work, but it will work in these cases for the convolution. Okay, so that's kind of the point they're trying to make there, even though it's not clear. Um, here they're just you know saying that this thing uh, has kind of a commutative property, convolution of f and g is g and f. That's what I was saying up here, where you can make e to t f or sine of t minus tau. Uh, sine of t g okay it doesn't matter the order but what does matter is that t minus tau thing you can't mess with that you can't write tau minus t instead of t minus tau that's not going to work okay 
So anyways, uh, that's the convolution theorem right here. Um, this is basically theorem um, 7.4.2. Okay, not this junk, but the thing above it, the, the point they're trying to make there. Um, so uh, let me mark that down here as uh, the convolution theorem. And basically it just says the Laplace of a convolution is equal to the Laplace of the individual functions, the, the product of the individual functions. Um, the proof isn't extraordinarily uh, um, uh, into, uh, sort of, uh, it, it's not going to help your understanding, basically, in my opinion. Um, there's some high order level kind of material going on there. This calc 3, if you're not taking calc 3, it's probably not going to be easy to see how you can interchange double integrals. Um, on top of that, it's it's probably not clear even the calc 3 students uh, when you can actually interchange the order of integration. Um, that may uh, have to wait until you get a little more math under your belt. So I'm just going to leave that to you. If you want, if you took Calc 3, you'll probably enjoy the idea of, you know, first integrating um, d tau dt and then integrating dt t, d tau. So we do that all the time in Calc 3. Um, I, I don't think we ever really make it clear when that doesn't work. Okay, so it doesn't always work. You can't always interchange uh, integrals. Um, we don't really put in calc 3, this kind of the the uh, criteria for that, we don't really ever um, kind of make that clear, but uh, it, they'll they'll do it here in this example. And uh, like I said, you you, you need calc 3 um, really to get your head around that part. So I'll just leave that for you. Um, uh, from that point on, I think we we can dive into some of these convolution problems in the homework. Okay. Um, just uh, note, uh, one thing to note about the convolution theorem is that uh, oftentimes we're going to end up looking at, uh, so just one note, um, you'll, you'll have sometimes a little plus of just what looks like a single function convoluted with uh, the number one. Okay. And in those cases, it's just going, you could just, you know, well, hey, that's the Laplace of F times the Laplace of 1. The Laplace of 1 is just 1 over S. So it'd be F of S um, all over S. And a little bit kind of uh, too obvious, but uh, nonetheless, it happens. Um, okay, so I think what we should be able to kind of handle most of these, the rest of these problems here. And you can see they, they can be quite nightmarish with regards to having to do partial fractions as usual. So let's uh, dive into the homework. I think that's the best way to go about this. Um, so let's look at number eight. Um, we have the Laplace transform, oh my God, excuse me, of one uh, convoluted with t cubed. So that's pretty easy, right? It's just one over s times uh, s to the fourth with three factorial over s to the fourth. So you just multiply straight across three factorial all over s to the fifth. Let me zoom back in. Whoops, wrong way. Okay, um, some more of that. Let's look at the Laplace of t squared convoluted with t e to the t. And they're pretty simple, right? You just uh, so the first for, for the first one, it's uh, an s cubed in the denominator, two factorial on the top. The next guy looks like a repeated, right? So you could think of it as a shift, if you wish. It's a Laplace of um, e to the t, but we're going to shift over by one. So um, oh wait, wrong way around. It's Laplace of um, t, but then s is going to be shifted over to s. Um, I want to go minus 1. Okay, So this will be 2 factorial all over s cubed times 1 all over s squared. But I have to shift that portion 
to s minus 1. So that'll equal 2 factorial all over s cubed times 1 all over s minus 1 squared. Laplace transforms, then we're, we're kind of getting Laplace transforms of the integrals. But what you do is just kind of think of these as convolutions. Okay. Uh, so this guy is convolution with the function 1, right? So you can think of it as Laplace inverse of uh, 0 to t. So um, the f of t is basically the e to the tau. And then the other function is just the number one. So one is the g of t minus tau. In other words, um, this is the Laplace transform of e to the tau convoluted with uh, one. And then you could just, uh, sorry, e to the t convoluted with one. And then you could just take the transforms of each, each of those. Okay, so that'd be one all over s minus one, and then times one over s. Okay. Um, this next guy, a little bit weird. Uh, we have the integral of e, zero to t of e to the negative tau cosine of tau and then d tau. Okay, so it doesn't quite look like a convolution, um, but you, you might be able to kind of uh, get around it in a weird sort of way. So, um, yeah, that is weird. So basically, if I had an e to the t in there, that would be nice, right? So I need that t minus tau. I don't like the idea of multiplying top and bottom by it. Sorry. Um, just the... Let me pause the video and think. Oh, um, so that, yeah, this, uh, yeah, um, <laughs> this was tricky. Um, so, so the function this time is all of this. All right, that's your f of tau. And then your g of t minus tau is just going to be 1. Okay, so this will equal then, uh, so what number is this? This is 13. Um, so that will equal a plus transform of uh, e to the negative t cosine of t convoluted with 1. Okay, right. So, so in other words, this guy, um, if we just take the of each of the individual pieces, that will be, um, so the, the, the annihilator, what, what the heck would the annihilator be? Well, it's going to be a shift, right? So it's uh, s all over s squared plus 1, and then we have s going to s minus negative 1, so s plus 1, and then times 1 over s, right? So this will be s plus 1 all over s plus 1 squared plus 1 times 1 over uh, s. Yeah, Tricky. Um, no big deal on 14. 15, we're going to have to take a derivative, right? So 15 Laplace transform of t integral 0 to t sine of tau d tau. That's going to equal the negative derivative with respect to s of the Laplace of um, this portion, which is a convolution of sine and 1. Okay, So um, I'll have the negative derivative with respect to s of 1 all over um, s squared plus 1 times 1 over s. 
and then I'll probably have to do a quotient rule. Or, no, I don't need a quotient rule. This is negative derivative with respect to s of 1 all over s cubed plus s. And then the derivative of that thing, um, you could do a power rule. There's a negative involved, negative, negative, positive, and then you have s cubed plus s now to the negative 2, then the chain rule, 3s squared plus 1. Um, okay, so here is an integral equation, number 16. Um, so in the book, it's the, uh, I believe it's the Volterra integral equations. Okay. And basically all I have to do is zip through and take the Laplace transform of everything and then solve for f of t eventually. So anyways, we, let's see, we have f of t plus the integral from zero to t of t minus tau times f of tau d tau equals t. Okay. So Laplace transform of this junk, I have the Laplace of f of t. Um, the Laplace of this thing is just the Laplace of the convolution of uh, t and f of t. And on the right, we have the Laplace of t, which is 1 over s squared. So I'll have the Laplace of f of t, and then plus the Laplace of t, again, is 1 over s squared times the Laplace of f of t. Equals 1 over s squared. And I have Laplace of f of t <coughs> times 1 plus 1 all over s squared equals 1 over s squared. You want to find a common denominator with these things, so it would be Laplace of f of t times uh, s, so 1 is the same as s squared over s squared, and then you'll have uh, s squared plus 1 all over s squared. Uh, multiply by reciprocals, so you get Laplace of f of t equals 1 all over s squared times s squared all over s squared plus 1. So plus f of t equals 1 all over s squared plus 1. So uh, taking inverse Laplace transforms on both sides, you get just looks like a sine, right, sine of t. Kind of cool. Um, more of the same there. This one's probably nastier, number 18, and 19 looks pretty easy. Um, number 20 is another one of those. This was 21. And then we get into some uh, circuit problems. So let's definitely do one of those, and then we have to go on to another topic. So let's do number 22. So we have uh, L is 0 0.1, the resistance is 3 ohms, the capacitor, capacitance is 0 0.05, I think that's Faraday's. Um, our uh, E of T is 70, U of T minus 1 minus 70 uh, times U of T minus 2. Remember, this problem was a bear. Um, we'll, we'll see. So anyways, I have 0 0.1 times the derivative of i with respect to t plus uh, 3i plus 1 all over 0 0.05 is 1 all over, um, what is that, 5 one hundredths. So that's going to end up being 20, I believe. Um, times the integral of i of tau d tau, and that equals that, I think they call that the impressed voltage, okay. Um, right, so uh, I'm going to multiply everything by um, 10 to get rid of that idiotic decimal in the beginning. So I have di over dt plus 30i plus 200 i of tau d tau equals 700 
And then we have these step functions, u of t minus 1 minus 700 u of t minus 2. Um, then you do Laplace transform. Okay, so Laplace transform di over, and I need an initial condition as well. So the initial condition is i of 0 is 0. Okay, so i of 0 is 0. So I'll have um, s times uh, well, plus of i minus 0 uh, plus 30 Laplace of i plus 200 Laplace of, and that integral will be a convolution of i and 1. And then on the, on the right side here then you'll have um, 700 e to the negative s times the Laplace of 1, right? The 1, I mean, technically it shifted over plus 1, but uh, the graph of 1 shifted over 1 is still the graph of 1. So it's just times uh, 1 and then minus 700, uh, the Laplace of 1 is, is 1 over s, sorry. And then minus 700 e to the negative 2s all over um, s again. Okay. On the left here, um, <coughs> you know, you have s Laplace of i plus 30 Laplace of i plus 200 Laplace of i times 1 over s equals all this stuff. Um, factor out the Laplace of i, and you get rewriting a little bit. No, we don't have to rewrite. How do I want to do this? Um, I'm going to go s plus uh, 30 plus 200 all over s um, equals all this stuff. You have to be very patient with these problems. Um, find a common denominator of s. And then uh, multiply by a reciprocal. Um, one thing that you're going to want to do is to factor that uh, numerator, this s squared plus 30, s plus 200. That's factorable. Right, so um, what is it? It's basically s plus 20 times s plus uh, 10, right? Okay, and then multiply by its reciprocal. So you'd have uh, 700e to negative s all over s minus 700e to negative 2s all over s times s all over s plus 20 times s plus 10. Okay, that thing. Um, the s's are going to cancel and you're going to get 700 e to negative s um, all over s plus 20 times s plus 10 minus 700 e to negative 2s all over s plus 20 times s plus 10. You're going to have to do a partial fraction on those, sadly. Um, so where are we? Uh, I guess if you want, let's factor out the 700 so I don't have to deal with that big number. s plus 20 times s plus 10. It's going to be a all over s plus 20 plus b b all over s plus 10. Multiplying through I get 1 equals a times s plus 10 <laughs> plus b times s plus 20. And then uh, let s be negative 10. So I get 1 equals 10b. So b is 1 tenth. 
let s equal negative 20. And you get 1 equals negative 10a, so a equals negative 1 tenths. So Laplace of i is equaling 700 times, let's factor out the e to the negative s. That's just going to be a stepwise thing, a step function. e to the negative s times, uh, so negative 1 tenths all over uh, s plus 20 and then plus 1 tenths all over s plus 10 and then minus 700 e to negative 2s times negative 1 tenths all over s plus 20 I'm smushing this in plus 1 tenths all over s plus 10 um, and then I do inverse Laplace on both sides Okay, so for the first, uh, I, I could factor out the one tenths, right? And I get a 70 out front. Um, the e to the negative s part is going to give me a step uh, function, um, t minus 1. And then the rest of this stuff, uh, the first one is an e to the, t, e to the negative 20 t, but we have to shift it, right, because of that that step function. So it'd be e to the negative 20 times t minus 1. And then uh, so that should have been a minus in front because there's that negative sitting there. And then uh, plus um, e to the negative 10 times t minus 1. Okay. And then minus, uh, again, factor out the 10, the 1 tenth, and you get 70. Um, you'll have the step function t minus 2 times uh, negative e, so basically the same thing but with t minus 2's in it. So, so the negative 20 times t minus 2 plus e to the negative 20 times t minus 2, negative 10 times t minus 2. Okay. And then as usual you you hope that's the answer. Um, as, as long as you're writing everything out and kind of not skipping too many skips, steps, because it's going to be tempting to just skip steps all over the place because you want to get the problem out of the way, you know. Um, but you got to have patience. Uh, let's see if I got it right. The t minus 1 stuff, e to the negative, the negative part is the e to the negative 20. That looks, that looks fine. And then they want you to graph it. So you kind of guesstimate um, because of the way the things are being turned on. It's either the first one or the, the fourth one. And then you can just do process of elimination to get the graph. Or if you want to, you can actually try to go graph it. Um, just making sure it's right. Negative 20, yeah. That's good. Uh, yeah, so the next part is on periodic functions. So this is the last section in this 7.4. Um, sure. This is 7.4.3. Uh, transforms of periodic functions. Um, the, the deal is, because the, the function repeats itself, you're going to be able to kind of split up the integral and then solve out for um, uh, uh, the, the integral in a weird sort of looper way like you, we do when we have the exponential times a trig and you got, you got to do by parts and then you got to assign a variable. Where did we see that? Right up here in example three. It's kind of like what it'll kind of work like that, um, but ultimately uh, it comes down to this theorem 7.4.3. So uh, theorem 7.4.3, where you have the Laplace transform of f of t equaling one all over one minus e to the negative s t, where big T is the period of the function, and then zero to the T, e to the negative st, f of t, dt, okay. 
and uh, then you see that they do the proof. So basically, you could split up the um, the definition of the tr Laplace transform at t because it's periodic. Um, well, you can always do that. You can always split up a Laplace integral and then do a u sub, and uh, then you're going to be able to kind of um, solve for. Let's let's. I, I don't want to make this video any longer than it is. Um, you you can read through that, but uh, it, it kind of has that looper type. Well, I'll do it. So, anyways, the proof. Here we go. Uh, we want the Laplace of f of t um, by definition. That's just going to be the integral from zero to infinity of e to the negative s t f of t dt. Um, we can always split up these integrals, right? So we know it's periodic at t, so hey, I'm going to split it there and see what happens, right? Negative st f of t dt plus the integral from big T to infinity of e to the negative st f of t uh, dt. Okay, then I'm going to do uh, a, a substitution on um, this. Uh, second integral here, so uh, let let uh, t equals u plus big T. Okay, so on the second integral, then um, big T will uh, we can replace. Uh, how do I want to do this? So so right now it's little t equals big T to t equals infinity. So when I I do this substitution. Um, how am I going to do that? Well, okay, so, so this part will be the integral from uh, big T. So I want to go du actually. So I want u to be um, equal to little t minus big T, and then if you plug, um, so so the the limits on the integral now are going to go. They're going to be u, right? It's going to go from u equals something to u equals something. So originally it was big T to infinity. Now if you plug in big T for little t, it'll be big T minus big T, which is zero to u equals infinity. And then you have e to the negative s times u plus big T, and then times f of uh, u plus big T, and then uh, du. Okay. All right. Um, because f is periodic, this guy right here will just be f of u. And on top of that, then you could factor out part of the exponential. So you'll have e to the negative s big T, because this integral is dependent on u only. So that becomes like a constant they could factor out. Zero to infinity, e to the negative s u times f of u du, because of the period, periodic uh, behavior. And then you can kind of uh, just play with u as a dummy variable and turn it in the terms of t again. Okay, so um, let u equal t in this integral, and you have e to the negative s times big T, integral of 0 to infinity of e to the negative s t f of t dt, which is just the Laplace transform again. So, um, you know, overall, then what do we have? So kind of let's zoom out a bit and see what we have, right? So I have the Laplace transform of f of t is equal to that first integral, which is sitting right here, hasn't gone away. So I'll rewrite that 0 to big T e to the negative st f of t dt. And then plus the second part, which I've rewritten, as e to the negative s times big T, it's right here, this thing. And then this part is just, again, the Laplace transform of f of t. So I just write Laplace transform of f of t, and then solve for the Laplace transform of f of t. So I have this thing minus e to the negative s big T Laplace transform of f of t, 
equaling the integral from zero to the big T of e to the negative st f of t dt. And then uh, factor out the Laplace transform of f of t and divide. Okay, so the leftover bit's one minus e to the negative st and you'll have your theorem. Okay, so theorem uh, 7.43, the Laplace transform of a periodic function f of t is going to be 1 all over 1 minus e. Oh my god, what happened? <laughs> I killed it. Um, all right, so anyways, I killed the notepad. Plus e to the negative st integral 0 to the t e to the negative st f of t. Okay, but long story short, basically you'll just plug stuff into that formula and you'll be able to do it, all right? <sighs> okay, sorry about that. I had to do that. I don't know why that was so important for me to do, but there it was. Okay, so let's uh, get back to kind of some of these problems and uh, see how they work, right? Okay, so 23, um, they give you some weird function. Notice it's periodic, so we can write f of t. All we do is kind of write down the first period, okay? So um, from 0 to a, it will be 1, and then it goes to negative 1 from a to 2a. Okay, so identify the period. The period is just the length of one uh, object, a repeated object. So the, the first object is going from one to negative one, from zero to two a. So the period is just two a, okay? Um, then we could just push everything into our uh, formula, okay, up here, whatever the heck that was. And so we have a uh, little plus, and I think all they want is a the Laplace transform of the thing. Okay, let's make sure. Find Laplace transform, yeah. Okay, so I have one all over one minus e to the uh, negative s times t, um, where t, I mean big T, so negative 2as, and then times the integral from zero to big T of, um, e to the negative, yeah, just the, basically the Laplace transform definition, e to the negative s t times f of t, okay, dt. Okay, okay great. Um, so what is this thing then? How am I going to do that? Well, you just use the definition back here and split that into uh, two integrals, right? So again, big T in the top part of that integral there, let me erase that and put 2a. So this will become 1 all over 1 minus e to the negative 2as times the integral from 0 to a, and you plug in 1 for f of t, so you get e to the negative st dt, um, and then plus, but it'll become minus because f of t is negative 1, minus uh, from a to 2a of e to negative st dt. Okay, already done. Um, so get 1 all over 1 minus e to negative 2as times integral of e to negative st, you got to do a u sub, you'll get a negative 1 over s. So negative e to negative st all over s evaluated from 0 to a minus, uh, again, you'll get another negative 1 over s, so plus e to the negative st all over s from a the 2a, and then uh, we're going to get 1 all over 1 minus e to the negative 2as uh, negative e to the negative sa all over s minus negatives that become plus 1 over s when you plug in 0 for t, and then plus e to the negative 2as all over s minus e to the negative sa 
all over s and then you have to combine like terms 1 all over 1 minus e to the negative 2 a s times there's one two of those so minus 2 e to the negative s a all over s plus e to the negative 2 a s all over s plus 1 over s if you want to put those all over the common denominator you can that's what i did when i submitted my answer but uh, yeah making sure it's right yeah okay and then it's basically just the same spiel for all of these um, this 25 is a little harder because you have you'll have a sine function in there so it'll be e to the negative st times sine of t yeah sine of t so you'll have to do some looper functions and you know a lot of fun anyways long it's been long enough that is good enough for this section um, thank you for watching i apologize uh, some of these problems are a bit involved and I'm sure at one point i forgot what i was doing but i apologize if i did um, if you stuck with me kudos to you I, I, I sort of wonder if it's even beneficial for you to watch me do a pdf for half an hour you know so uh you know you have to hopefully you're managing your your study time effectively um you know ideally i wish you could always listen to everything i have to say but i understand that you know it's not always in your best interest it's probably good to fast forward every once in a while I don't know. I, I really don't know. I need to study that more. Um, anyways, uh, thank you for watching as usual, uh, and I'll see you next time.